In the beginning, there was a free press. Well, not really, but it sounded good. By the end of the millennium, five men controlled the world's media, and we ate their crap up with a spoon. Yet there was one man who operated outside their control. He and his motley crew were known as the People's Democratic Republic of Television. Their mission? To bring the people the awful truth. Tonight, from somewhere inside the PDR TV, please welcome Michael Moore! Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is our second week on the air here for The Awful Truth. And I have a number of ideas and things I would like to share with you uh, this evening. And I'm very glad that, that you're here. Uh, I read this statistic in the paper that said that, that actually there are three guys, uh, Bill Gates, uh, Walton Jr., you know, the heir to the Walmart uh, fortune in this country, big uh, department stores, and, and, and the Sultan of Brunei. These three guys together, all right, own uh, $181 billion. I mean, that's their net worth, and that equals the total gross domestic product of 162 countries. I mean, is that an amazing statistic? You know, but then I got to think, see, this is good. Before it was the rich. How are we ever going to beat the rich? It was so daunting. But then it was like, wait, wait a minute. Now it's just three guys. <laughs> it's just three guys. We can kick three guys' ass, can't we? Huh? I mean, check out these three guys. Right? Stand up. You three of you, stand up. Yes, the three of you, right in the second row there. Hey, now, we can kick their ass, can't we? Look at them. Huh? <laughs> you see... It's okay, sit down. It's a nonviolent crowd, sort of. No, but, but really, I mean, when you start to think of it that way, it's not so overpowering, is it? You know, it is, it's really just three guys now that we have to defeat. And actually, one of them, Bill Gates, is worth $97 billion. $97 billion. That is equal to the net worth of 120 million Americans. I mean, how did he get that rich? He ain't that smart, is he? I mean, look at him. We can kick his ass, can't we? That's just one guy. One guy. Well, I got to thinking, you know, if the rich are really supposed to be smart, well, how smart are they? So I decided the way to find out was to challenge them to my own quiz show. Rich people rule the world. Boy, they must be pretty smart. But just how smart are they? To find out, we pit wealthy people against working people in a test of common knowledge. Meet our contestants from Upper Crust, Madison Avenue, New York, and Blue Collar, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, let's play Beat the Rich. What's your zip code? Two. Uh, <laughs> What's my zip code? Which where? Palm Springs, 92270. And Brentwood? Uh, 90069. No, it's 49. What's your zip code? 1021. 1021? What's your zip code? 53221. 15220. 48152. How much to supersize it at McDonald's? 39 cents. How much to supersize it at McDonald's? Uh, $3.95. What do you do for a living? I own a McDonald's hamburger business. Oh, you do? Yes. How much does it cost to supersize it at McDonald's? Uh, 29 cents. 39. 39. One share of stock at IBM. No idea. Don't own stock. Oof. Price of a single share of IBM stock? 162. It's been going up. Uh, $160 approximately. How much does it cost? No, I, I, I know because I looked it up yesterday. It went up like four and a half points. <laughs> good for you. I'm in the market. That's a good year for Merlot. I have no idea. For who? Merlot. Who the hell's that? Say that again. Say that again. A good year for Merlot. A good year for Merlot. Who's Merlot? 
Marlo. Marlo. Accent on the first syllable. Marlo. 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 What's a good year? What's a good year for Marlo for the red wine? Ninety-five. Ninety-five. Ninety-six. First thing you do when the toilet doesn't work. First thing I do when a toilet doesn't work. Yeah. I go to the, my second toilet. Call the super or call the, uh, somebody to fix it. Run like hell. Get, get out and get another one. I take the top off, I turn the water off, I see if it's flushing properly. If it's not, I go to, down to the hardware store and buy parts and put it back to the store. Would you show us how to change the bag in a vacuum cleaner? No, no, I couldn't do that. Well, you can do this. No, you can't do this. Yes, you can. Come on, we're Americans. We don't do, we don't vacuum. A line notch with hose adapter. Aye, aye, aye. Can you change a bag in a vacuum cleaner? By, by all means. Can you please show us how? Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Where's a good place to go for a winter vacation? Aspen, St. Moritz. St. Martin. Best place? Polynesia to me. Best place for a winter vacation? Vermont. You're from? Vermont. Florida. Poconos. I go to Deep Creek, Maryland, uh, Indiana. Indiana. What's the minimum wage these days? I have no idea. I, I, I really don't know. Uh, Eight dollars. Yeah, I think it's eight dollars an hour, six dollars. I really don't know. What's the minimum wage? Five fifty. It's too low. Mm -hmm. It should be ten dollars. Bottle of Dom Perignon. Now you're talking out my league. <laughs> no clue. Never had one. And yet. Price of a bottle of Dom Perignon. Oh, about hundred fifty dollars. Dom Perignon uh, in Italian liras, of yeah. course. One twenty-five. Well, it depends where you get it. Ferrari or Berlucci, they are half price. In addition to this box, what else do you need to make this? To make this? Yeah. Milk, margarine, water. In addition to this box, what do you need to make this? Cheese. I thought you just opened it up and threw it in a pot. A pot. Oh, make it, put make it in. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put it in the pot and yes. cook it. Right. Yes. And then you don't add anything. I don't. Credit limit on your credit card. I don't have one. No credit cards. A thousand dollars. Five grand, but I owe six grand. What's the credit limit on your credit card? Uh, twenty-five thousand. Whatever he tells me. Which one? I have a lot of them. One is twenty thousand, and one is forty thousand. What does it cost to rent a home video these days? Never rent one until about the no, rent 35. Cost of a video rental. Three dollars. Three bucks? Ninety-nine cents if you get three runs. There you go. That's the way. <laughs> Last time you went to a hairstylist, what did it cost? hundred and thirty. Price of your last haircut. Ten dollars. Twenty dollars. Twelve bucks. Seven dollars. Free because my mother-in-law is a hairdresser. I cut it myself. <laughs> Time's up. Let's go to the scoreboard. The rich, six. Us, 26. And the workers win, beat the rich. Their prize, a handshake and the knowledge that they'll wake up tomorrow living their same damn lives. And the rich, they get to maintain their control of 90% of the world's wealth and 100% of the world's Marlowe. Thanks for playing Be the Rich! Don't go away, we'll be right back! Any conservatives in the audience? Any Republicans? I, I know this may seem like a dangerous time to admit that. <coughs> I guarantee you, if you will admit it, that no, no harm will come to you. There, there, yes, we have one here, two, three, a oh, very good, very brave uh, individuals. Thank you. I, I just, I, I just would like to address the three who are here with us uh, uh, tonight. I admire you guys, you conservatives, on all, yeah, on all the basics. You get up in the morning. You know, I mean, that's something we don't do. You know, 
you were up before the crack of dawn, and you get to bed at a decent time, and you really do brush three times a day, right? Am I right, sir? You do, don't you? You brush your teeth. You, you shampoo, you rinse, and then you shampoo again, right? I know you do. You follow all the rules. That's why you do it. And you coach Little League. And you're putting $5 a week into little Jimmy's Santa Club account. You keep your new car smell forever. You never lose your keys, you know? So because I really admire you, I want you to support a number of the things that I believe in. Not because for my liberal do-good bleeding heart reasons, but because it will benefit you. You will gain from this. Number one, higher wages. I mean, if everybody's making forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, the chances of someone breaking into your mansion and stealing your home entertainment system is nil, right? You know, you know, you're you're safe. You don't have to go live in those gated communities anymore. You know, it's good for you. <laughs> it's good for you. Gay rights is good for you. Gay rights is good for you. Yes. Think about this, okay? Don't think of your own self-interest. You know, you probably hear, like, some people say, you know, 10% of the population is gay, and then you, you've probably said, oh, that's not true. 10%'s not gay. You know? No, you want it to be 20%, 30%. The more gay guys there are, the more babes for you. That's the way you, you got to think of it this way. Gay is good. Gay is good for me. More women for me. Me, 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 me. That's what being a conservative is. Me. I need more money. I'm safe and I'm going to get a community. I love gay men, more women. That's what you want. Especially the last one because I really believe that gay, gay rights and our treatment of how we treat gay men and lesbians is really the last frontier of civil rights in this country that we have to address. And, um, And I've decided uh, I had to do something about it, and I'd like to share that with you right now. Ah, America, where everyone is equal under the law, where discrimination on the basis of race, creed, or sex is a thing of the past, right? AIDS, rotten, dying, spotted faggots are organizing under the banner of gay rights. We have nothing but hate and contempt for these people. Shouldn't they, like, take all homosexuals from one city and just put them in the city of their own? In 20 states, it is a crime to be gay. Though overall crime has dropped in this country, hate crimes against gay men and lesbians are on the rise. Sodomy laws, laws that criminalize homosexual sex, force gay couples to live under the constant threat of arrest and even imprisonment. We don't need it flaunted. Uh -huh. They're not being persecuted in any way. But no single event has galvanized the country's attention toward violence against gays than the brutal, senseless murder last year of Matthew Shepard, the University of Wyoming student who was beaten and left hanging on a fence to die by two thugs who killed him for no other reason than the fact that he was gay. The entire nation reacted with shock, and suddenly some people were starting to pay attention. It was clear what I had to do. Enter our Freedom Riders. The Awful Truth Gay Team. Xavier. Xavier. Come call me Kalua. Kalua. A dozen Seth. of the most determined, Four. tactically trained, Tony. and sensibly dressed right gay men and lesbians Tony. I could find. We're heading out. Riding aboard 16,000 pounds of hot pink steel and fiberglass, straddling a chop shop customized Ford Slant 6 diesel engine. The Sada Mobile. A sleek chariot of freedom-loving buggery designed to carry our gay ambassadors of love on a whirlwind tour of every single state that made it illegal to be gay. First stop, the state capital in Topeka, Kansas. I was approached by a man who started up a friendly conversation and he eventually turned the conversation to sex. He started asking sexual questions and uh, once I admitted what I'd be willing to do in my bedroom, I was arrested. Well, that's why we've come to Kansas right. uh, with our Sodomobile. Uh, we're going to each of the states where these laws are still on the books, and we're breaking every damn one of them. Is there room for one more? There was a reason I had come to Topeka. 
Topeka is also the home to Pastor Fred Phelps, the Baptist preacher who enjoys picketing the funerals of people who have died of AIDS. When I saw Phelps on TV picketing Matthew Shepard's funeral and harassing his grieving parents, I knew something had to be done. I decided to pay a visit to Pastor Fred. So you like funerals? Well, you know, uh, it's a good time to preach. Yeah, yeah. It's a good time to go out in Casper, Wyoming to inject a little sanity and the Bible truth into that insane orgy of homosexual propaganda and lies. I mean, every fag group in the country was using that, making that poor dead boy a poster boy to promote their filth and encouraging all the youth of America to hold him up as somebody to emulate. He was not a good man. This is not a good thing he did. He's in hell now. That's what needs to be preached. You're like dogs eating your own vomit. Wake up. Dogs eating their own vomit? Yeah. But they, but they do that. I mean, my dog eats his own vomit. No, Fred knew a lot about dog vomit, and I wanted to hear more. But I thought it was about time Fred met my friends on the Sodomobile. Well, we brought along, you know, some of our friends who are traveling across the country. Uh, so you could talk to them. This is our Sodomobile. They'd like you to come on board. Oh, I'm not coming on board. And give it a shot. Here they are. No, I'm not coming on board. Got children. And then the sodomy really began. You don't want me in there. We were breaking laws that Phelps hadn't even heard about. Way to go, guys. Way to go. You're doing good. Don't get too close. We'll have to call the police on you. Celebrate the freedom of this country. I thought it was time for a free and open exchange of ideas. You guys are headed straight for hell in a faggot's handbasket. There's no need to get this close. Reverend Fred was outnumbered, and for once, he left in defeat. It was victory number one for the Sodom Mobile. I think he felt the love. Then it was on to the open road heading south in search of new wrongs to right. The wheels on the bus go round Long round. days and even longer nights of traveling, often with nothing more than sodomy to pass the time. Everywhere we went, people came out to cheer us on. Our message of goodwill was sweeping the nation. And on the horizon, a golden opportunity that couldn't be passed up, a chance to break the laws in three states at once, at the meeting point of the Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma borders. There was a lot of love at the border that night. And I mean, a lot. Heading east through Missouri, where we showed the show me state a few things they hadn't seen before. Okay, boys, drive safe. Go back to having sex. On to Tennessee a state with no sodomy law, where our freedom riders take a well-deserved rest. Down into Georgia, and then, after a fresh change of women, we headed south toward Pascagoula, Mississippi, the hometown of Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott. Uh, in America now, there's, uh, you know, there's an element that wants to make that uh, alternative lifestyle, uh, you know, the, an acceptable or, or normal in every Trent has some pretty now, cute ideas about what it means to be gay. He thinks it's a disease like kleptomania or alcoholism. Uh, but you should try to, um, you know, work with that person to uh, learn to control that problem. Objections to homosexual or bisexual. How could we find a common language with a guy like this? A senator, a statesman, a... Uh former cheerleader? That's right, homophobic Trent was once a cheerleader at Ole Miss. <laughs> now we knew exactly how to talk to him. Ready? Okay! Swish it over there, swish it over here. E, R, spell square. All right. Come back in and be arrested for trespass. How are you today? It was clear Trent just wasn't going to come out. The all sodomite cheerleading squad had given it their best, but sodomy waits for no man. It was time to move on. Suddenly, 
Word came from Topeka. Pastor Phelps was at it again. There was no time to waste. We had to head north, but quick. How come they hide in the van instead of coming out here behaving like little animals like they were doing out there when there was no camera on them? Like you're living, you're gonna die and split hell wide open. So and if it won't I be die, very, oh, no, don't would you touch come me. to my funeral? Just, if I were to die as far as well, well how far would you go? You're not important enough. You're not a, it's gotta not be important somebody enough? like the president's mother. Oh. Well, the furthest you travel for a funeral? Uh, the furthest would get to San Francisco to Randy Schultz's funeral. Oh, oh you were there for that? Oh. Oh. I missed that one. Oh, we missed that one. Awesome. Well, how was the food? Comment? Come on, just sing Amazing Grace with us. Who do you think I am, Karen Carpenter? No, no, no. <laughs> well, no. Sing, sing a song. Sing a song. Oh, sing. sing. Bad enough they bashed gays, but the carpenters? Well, maybe it was the singing, maybe it was the sodomy. Fred was on the run again. And this time it looked like it was for good. Victory was ours. But there will always be more work to be done. Wherever there is a sodomy law to be broken or an antique sale to be perused, that's where the Sodomobile will go until every gay man and lesbian in the world can raise their voices in freedom. Gay at last, gay at last, heavens to Betsy, we are gay at last. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You'll never be back on NBC now. <laughs> Marta! <laughs>